Turbo Conquering Mega Eagle. Here we have a, a DHC1, the Havilland Canada Chipmunk. Um, <clears throat> this is a Portuguese assembled model. None of us are quite sure whether the, the kit came from Canada or, or Britain. Um, it's the only the Havilland Canada, the Havilland Canada model ever designed in Canada and built in England to my knowledge it's certainly the first um, <clears throat> but either way one of these countries produced the kit and sent it to Portugal where it was assembled and it's not even a straight chipmunk is it but it's it got um what's the instrument panel out of uh half of it so the um the the panel and the and stick grips, which are bloody sexy, we'll just go and have a look at them now, are, are lifted out of a Harvard. Um, we've currently got it in the, in the hangar for an annual inspection and a few, few defects, a few defects that needed rectifying. Look at that stick. Uh, front panel there. We'll have a, a little bit of a closer look in a minute when we run it up. And there we go, very heavy airframe. Heavy gauge alley, a little bit, little bit thicker than a Cessna. Yeah. Um, wings are, wings are fabric on the rear, rear two thirds. Aluminium on the front front third, um, bladder type fuel tanks which we've just had to repair. Always a bit of a challenge. The thing that strikes me about this this aircraft is the incredibly rugged construction next to all the other light aircraft we maintain. Um, these these audios look like they're straight off something four or five times the weight, you know. Uh, we've got floating disc brakes, so a fixed caliper and the, and the disc flakes in the wheel which um, was probably cutting edge at the time I suppose. Everything else was running around with drum brakes and uh, you actually got quite effective brakes here but the, the operation of the brakes is a, is a little bit of a mind fuck. Um, so we'll show you them when we, when we go for a little bit of a taxi. Uh, so this is at a time when the Canadians were building aircraft basically under the under the rules laid out by the Civil Aviation Authority in this country. Um, so so what you know, twice as many rivets as an American aircraft, I suppose. I'm not saying that's a good or a bad thing. Um, Obviously, obviously must have been a benefit when they got around to making things like the beaver and the stuff, I suppose. We all know the Canadians make the best bush planes. Um, beautiful lines on this thing. We've got uh, a couple of add-ons from the original design. Just in front of the tailplane there, there's a, an extension of the tailplane. What would you call this, Ash? To aid in uh, longitudinal stability about the lateral axis. Apparently, um, I'm not even going to say because I'll probably be wrong. Uh, I can't say it, I'm probably wrong about everything I've said so far. Because it's quite a rounded fuselage, um, uh -huh. it, when the aircraft stalls and spins, then the airflow around the fuselage, um, I'm not quite sure, gets sort of follows the um, contours of the fuselage and makes the makes it hard to recover from a spin. I, I, I'm not too sure. Oh, so longitudinal stability about the normal axis or the lateral axis? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Look at that sexy bit of tin work, eh? Mm -hmm. It's all uh, all wrinkled and dinged, I suppose. This, pro this, this has probably got a few stories to tell. Quite a low hours airframe. I think it's only done what. 
uh, under 10,000 hours anyway. So at the back of the aircraft we've got a uh, all fabric covered controls on on an aluminium frame. Um, riveted aluminium frame with fabric covering with the uh, Aluminium trim tab. Aluminium trim tab, yeah. Uh, cable op mixture of mixture of controls on this aircraft. I suppose everything's primarily cable operated, but then goes to some some rather nice forgings. Uh, on and push rods from a bell crank that is the cable op on the elevator anyway. Got the tailwheel here which is uh, this is all fabricated steel the arm as is the fork for the tailwheel and it's it's not steered it's just free to cast or wherever it goes which leads to some ground handling difficulties uh, what the pilots say they have to have to apply a bit of brake on takeoff sometimes if there's a bit of a crosswind you've got the uh, rubber donuts for the for the shock absorption in the tailwheel and uh, <clears throat> Steel tube frame supporting the back of the horizontal stab. It's a rear bulkhead. Data plate up there. And some crazy 1950s terminal boxes for the electrics. They'd only just invented electricity then, I think. Uh, You got the mags on at the back. Mags are on at the back. I got the stick if you want it. Yeah. You got throttle at a quarter or a bit, just to crack it open a bit. Rip. Well. Rip. Here we go. We got a flat back. Flip. Yeah, oh, all off. Brakes are covered. Well, faster. Rip, bro. Rip. Much the same as the front, and no uh, radios or anything down by your feet. Got the uh, RPM there, two needle gauge, pretty cool. 
airspeed goes up to 300 knots. Don't think you'll be getting 300 knots in this machine, uh, but still. Flipping the brake and it's helping to turn. 